Hello students. Today we will be studying histology of glands. Now a gland is a specialized group of cells that synthesizes and secretes substances or hormones. Glands are derived from epithelium. Let us see classification of glands. Based on the number of cells, they can be unicellular gland or multicellular gland. Unicellular gland is a single cell that performs secretory function. Multicellular gland has a group of cells. Based on the presence of duct, glands can be classified as exocrine glands and endocrine glands. Exocrine glands have duct to convey the secretions, while endocrine glands do not have a duct. These are ductless glands and secrete the secretions directly into the bloodstream. Based on the mode of secretion, glands can be classified as mirocline, holocrine and apocrine glands. Mirocline gland secretes by the process of exocytosis. Holocrine gland secretes by disintegration of the entire cell and apocrine gland secretes by shedding of the apical portion of the gland. This here is a picture which shows us the three types of glands based on the type of secretion. This here is mirocrine type of secretion where vesicles are formed and these vesicles are taken up to the apical segment of the cell and then the lining of the vesicle fuses with the surface epithelium of the cell and that disintegrates to let out the secretions by a process of exocytosis. What we see here is holocrine type of secretion where the entire cell disintegrates by a process of programmed cell death and that is how the secretions are let out. And what we see here is apocrine type of secretion where the apical portion of the cell is going to disintegrate and is going to be shed off along with the secretions. The basal part remains and again regenerates to form the cell again. Exocrine glands. These convey their secretions with the help of ducts and these glands can be further classified based on the number of branches of the duct into simple and compound based on the shape of the secretory unit into three types tubular, acinar and alveolar based on nature of secretion into serous, mucus and mixed type and based on the mode of secretion into mirocrine, holocrine and apocrine. Let us see how do we classify exocrine glands based on the branching pattern of the duct. This is of two types, simple gland and compound gland. Simple gland has only one unbranched duct. Examples being crypts of liverkin, sweat glands and meibomian glands. And what we see here in this diagram is a gland having a duct and a secretory unit. And as we see here, it is a single unbranched duct and that is a simple gland. Compound gland has branching of the secretory duct. So the duct here is going to be branched. Example being Brunner's glands in duodenum, mammary gland and submandibular glands. As is seen here in the diagram, the gland shows the duct which is branched. This is the duct and we can see the two branches and we see the secretory units. So this where the branched duct is seen that is a compound gland. Then based on the shape of the secretory unit, we can have three types of glands. First being tubular gland. Herein, a tubular gland has a tube-shaped secretory unit. 
and the tube may be straight, coiled or branched. Examples being intestinal glands, sweat glands, gastric glands and Brunner's glands. So here we see the three types of tubular glands. As we see here the secretory unit is like a tube and this tube can be of three types straight, coiled or it can be branched. So this is tubular gland. Second type is acinar gland. Here the gland has spherical secretory unit that appears round on a cross section. Example being exocrine part of pancreas and the salivary glands. The picture here shows us a gland this here is the secretory unit which is seen to be spherical in shape and when you take a section it will appear round and this is the duct. Similarly here we also see another gland wherein the secretory units are spherical. So this here is a simple acinar type of gland and this here is a simple branched acinar type of gland because the secretory units are branched or divided into multiple parts but the gland is but the duct is just single duct so simple acinar and simple branched acinar so these are acinar glands the third type is alveolar gland has a plus shaped secretory unit the glands with distended secretory units, that is when the secretory unit is fully active or overactive, then they are also called as sacular glands. Examples being mammary gland and the exocrine part of pancreas. Next we see how do we classify exocrine glands based on features of secretory unit and the branching pattern of the duct together. The first that we see here are simple gland which is an unbranched duct. This can be either simple tubular that is straight tubule example being intestinal glands or it could be simple coiled tubular wherein it has a coiled tubule example sweat glands and here we have diagram to show the same. This is simple tubular and this is simple coiled tubular. Two more types simple branch tubular having a branched tubular secretory unit example gastric glands and simple branched acinar having a branched acinar type of secretory unit example sebaceous glands and these are pictures of the same. Here we see that the secretory component is branched tubular but the duct is a single duct so simple branched tubular similarly here the secretory component is acinar and is branched or is multiple with a single duct so simple branched acinar so these are the four types based on the type of duct and the secretory unit in a simple gland. What, let us see what is the further subdivision in a compound gland. Compound gland is where the duct is branched. So here it could be of three types. Compound tubular wherein the secretory unit is tubular. Example Brunner's glands in duodenum. Second it could be compound acinar wherein the secretory unit is acinar. Example is exocrine part of pancreas. Pictures showing the same. This is compound tubular where we can see that the duct is branched and the secretory units are tubular. And here we see compound acinar where duct is branched, secretory units are acinar. And the third type here is compound tubulo acinar where there are tubulo acinar secretory units so combination of both tubule and acinar are seen in the secretory units 
with a branched duct. Example being the submandibular salivary gland. This is the picture showing you compound tubulo acinar. Duct is branched and the secretory part is a combination of tubular and acinar types. So this is how a compound gland can be further classified based on the features of the duct and the secretory units. Then we go on to see how exocrine glands are classified based on the nature of secretions. Three types, serous, mucus and mixed gland. Serous glands. These have serous acini as secretory unit and secrete protein rich watery secretions. These acini are lined by pyramid shaped simple columnar epithelium with round basal nucleus. Large amount of rough endoplasmic reticulum in the basal region of the cells gives basal basophilia. Cells also show well developed Golgi complex in many secretory vesicles that is the zymotion granules in the apical region of the cell that gives apical eosinophilia. Serous acinus has a very small lumen or maybe no lumen is appreciated at all and this is because the apices or the apical parts of these pyramidal cells will occupy the central part of the acinus. Example of serous glands are parotid gland, exocrine part of pancreas, lacrimal gland and von Ebner's glands in the tongue. This here shows us a serous acinus. So we see that the acinus is rounded in shape. It's lined by pyramid shaped columnar cells and the apices of these cells jut into the central part giving rise to a very small lumen or at times no lumen is appreciated. Nucleus is rounded and placed basally. We see basal basophilia because of large amounts of rough endoplasmic reticulum and apical eosinophilia because of the Golgi complex and the secretory vesicles which are seen here as the zymogen granules. So that is a serous acinus. What we also see here is a myoepithelial cell which is there just outer to the acinus and when these cells contract they help in squeezing out the secretions from the acinus. Second we see the mucus glands. They have mucus acini as secretory units and they secrete thick mucoid secretions. These acini are lined by pyramid shaped simple columnar epithelium having a flat elongated basally placed nucleus and clear cytoplasm. The mucus secreted and stored in the cell in the form of mucinogen granules is lost during tissue preparation thus giving an appearance of clear cytoplasm. Mucus acinus has a well defined wide lumen example being sublingual salivary gland. This we see here a mucus acinus. The acinus is oval lined by pyramid shaped columnar cells could also be pyramid shaped cuboidal cells at times. They have a flat elongated nucleus which lies near the basal part of the cell or nearer to the basement membrane and the cytoplasm appears clear or empty. Apical parts show presence of mucinogen granules. We also see a myoepithelial cell here. Next we see mixed glands. These glands have mucus acini with serous demilunes as secretory unit and they secrete both mucus as well as enzyme rich watery secretions. Mucus acinus is capped with serous cells that form the serous demilunes and these are nothing but a half moon shaped cap 
over the mucus acinus which consists of serous cells. All the serous cells of the serous demiurgs pour their secretions in the lumen of the mucus acinus through fine canaliculi. Example of a mixed gland is submandibular salivary gland. This year we see a mucus acinus similar to what we have described earlier and what we see here is a half moon shaped cap made up of serous cells which is seen covering or capping the mucus acinus and that is what is called a serous demilune. So this is how mixed gland has secretory unit as a mucus acinus with serous demilunes. Myoepithelial cells are also seen here outer to the secretory acini. Let us see differences between a serous cell and a mucus cell. The shape and size of the ligand cells. In serous cells, these are small pyramid shaped columnar cells. Mucus cells are large pyramid shaped cuboidal or low columnar cells. On H and E staining, serous cells show basal basophilia and apical eosinophilia while mucus cells show clear cytoplasm since the mucus is washed away during tissue processing. The nucleus is a round placed in the basal part of the serous cell while the mucus is flat and elongated and placed nearer the basement membrane in the mucus cell. Serous cells have presence of zymogen granules while mucus cells show presence of mucinogen granules. Let us now also see differences between a serous acinus and a mucus acinus. When we talk of size of the acinus, the serous acinus is smaller in size as compared to the mucus acinus while the mucus acinus is larger than the serous acinus. Type of acini, serous acini are compound alveolar type while mucus acini are compound tubular or tubulo alveolar type. The lumen of the serous acinus is very small or hardly appreciated while mucus acini have a well defined wide lumen. The cells lining serous acinus are serous cells while the mucus acinus is lined by mucus cells. Serous acini secretion is thin watery enzyme rich while mucus acinus secrete thick mucoid secretions. Example of serous acinus is parotid gland while mucus acinus is seen in sublingual salivary gland. And here we see both the pictures to have a comparative view, a serous acinus and a mucus acinus. So this is smaller in size as compared to the mucus acinus. Lining cells here we see large pyramidal type of columnar cells. Here we see pyramidal type of columnar or cuboidal cells. Nucleus is rounded, nucleus is flat and elongated, lumen is very small or hardly appreciated and here we see a well defined white nucleus. We now go on to see how do we classify exocrine glands based on the mode of secretion. Three types, merocrine, holocrine and apocrine. Merocrine or ecrine glands synthesize secretory product and seal it into vesicles. And these membrane bound vesicles fuse with the apical surface of the cell and get secreted out by the process of exocytosis. This type of secretion is seen in most of the exocrine glands. Example being pancreatic acinar cells and merocrine sweat glands. This is a diagram showing merocrine type of secretion. Second is holocrine glands. Synthesize and accumulate the secretory product while discharging secretions. Entire cell disintegrates and undergoes programmed cell death on maturation. Example, sebaceous glands, 
mebomian or tarsal glands of the eyelids. And this here is a picture showing us holocrine type of secretion. The third type is apocrine glands. Synthesize secretory product and accumulate it in the apical portion of the cell. This apical portion of the cell along with the secretory products is shed off. Example, lactating mammary gland, apocrine sweat glands, ceremonious glands of external ear. And this picture shows us the apocrine type of secretion. We then go on to see paracrine and autocrine glands. Some epithelial cells, which are unicellular glands, function as paracrine or autocrine signaling mechanism. Paracrine signaling. Cells secrete substances into the extracellular matrix. This reach the target cells by diffusion and affects other nearby cells which are the target cells. Example, vasodilators released by endothelial cells act on vascular smooth muscle cells to produce relaxation of vascular wall. Autocrine signaling. Cells secrete a molecule that acts on the same cell by binding with receptors. And this may either activate or inhibit the activity of the cell. So it may either have a positive feedback or a negative feedback on the cell. Example, activation of cells of immune system by interleukins. Lastly, we see goblet cells. These are simple columnar cells that function as unicellular glands. They lie among the lining epithelium either singly or in other glands along with the other cells lining the epithelium. Cells are goblet shaped, having an apical cup shaped portion and a basal narrow stem. In the apical portion, the cytoplasm has numerous secretory vesicles filled with mucus. During tissue processing, mucus gets washed away. Thus, on h &E staining, the apical portion appears clear or empty. Nucleus is flat peripherally placed and rests in the basal portion of the cell just near the basal lamina. This we see a goblet cell having an apical cup shaped portion and a narrow stem at the basal portion. The apical portion of the cell as we see here shows a number of secretory vesicles which are filled with mucus. Then we see the other cell organelles and we see a flattened nucleus which lies at the basal portion of the cell nearer to the basement membrane or the basal lamina. What we see here is epithelial lining of the trachea showing pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells. So what we see here are goblet cells which are seen along with the other ciliated columnar cells. Thus, when we say goblet cell, these are unicellular glands. They secrete mucus and their mode of secretion is neurocrine, sometimes apocrine. Where do we see these goblet cells? Location, it is seen in the epithelial lining of small intestine, large intestine, respiratory tract and the conjunctive. Thus, we have studied the general features of the gland and classification of glands based on various ways of classifying. For further reference, you can read Sontakya Yogesh, Textbook of Human Histology, CBS Publishers and Distributors, Private Limited, New Delhi, 2020, page numbers 45 to 53. Thank you.